Make sure you guys subscribe so you don't miss out on any third and long content. I want to send a huge shout out to Verizon, our new presenting sponsor. Third and Long is now powered by Verizon. What's good? This is Eric Armstead. Welcome to another episode of Third and Long, presented, of course, by Verizon. Got another special guest, my little homie. Uh, some of y'all know him by Moot Dog. Jabbar and Kemal, I appreciate you getting on the show, bro. Yes, sir. Good to be here, bro. Yeah, man, it's been uh, been a long time coming, you know. Um, I feel like this is the episode people have been waiting for, you know. It was in the comments like, man, we don't get JK on. Mm -hmm. And we finally got it done. So appreciate you, appreciate you being on the show. Yeah, man. Thank you, bro. Yeah, man. Um, you know, I, we got a great relationship, obviously, and, uh, you know, um, I'm excited about this episode because, you know, we have a lot of conversations with people, you know, bringing in some people in our, our conversations and our relationship, but, right. uh, you know, you're from, you know, a, a, a few different places and you got an interesting, very interesting background that I've been able to, to learn about. So you're born in South Carolina, right? raised in DC, right? and then went back to South Carolina. Right. Yeah. So tell us about. You know, young JK, growing up. I mean, you know what I mean? I'm a kid just like everybody else, you know? Like, <laughs> uh, life was cool. I mean, just, I uh, was born right in South Carolina that as long as I can remember, I was in D.C. Mm -hmm. 10 plus years. Um, then my mom, my grandpops, he first came <laughs> over from Trinidad. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not sure when, but then my mom came brought my brothers, and uh, I was the only one of my mom's children that's from America. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I mean, it was it was cool. We had a chill a little life for a minute, mm -hmm. and then um, life hits. You know what I'm saying? Mom, my, my aunt working with a guy. Um, well, it was like the. Like, a, I don't know if it was construction or painting or what, but the boss ended up dying and mm -hmm. losing their job. Mm -hmm. And we, we did everything, hit rock bottom, you know, and it was, it was real tough. And uh, if you know DC, though, it, it's tough already as it is. And we just end up having it real super hard, you know, trying to find a way, trying to find a way to make it, you know what I'm saying? And, that kind of made me who I was. I'm not gonna really, you know, dive into it a lot, but all of those circumstances kind of made me who I was. And I didn't really get a chance to play sports when I was like that age, because mom, she couldn't pay for it. And uh pop one, I always wanted to play because of my cousin. He played, and I never got a chance. She had to pay, but my thing, I wanted to box so like that was my first thing. That was the first love. Box. Yeah, I, I wanted to box, yeah. Always, I, I found a liking in it, you know. I didn't get to do that either. I had to pay. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, so I had a I had a late start in my career. Yeah, still worked out for me. But yeah, when so, did you, uh, when you finally start playing football? Uh, I tried a couple of years, but it just never really worked out. Mm -hmm. But like really, like into it, like tenth grade. I tried in ninth grade, but living in DC. Most of the times, couldn't get to school, uh, missed a lot of school days, so I didn't really even get to practice or nothing like that once. So, um, and honestly, I would, I would skip school. Like, I didn't like going to school for, for a ninth grade. That was like, a, it, was a, it was a crazy environment that I was in. Mm -hmm. you know, I went to school in the heart of Southeast D.C. And if you know about Southeast D.C., it's, it's like, it's the worst place in DC, like bar none. You know, you got metal detectors when you're going to school, um, all type of stuff. So a lot of violence going on. So I just tried to, I stayed away from it, honestly, you know, uh, try to find my own lane, riding the train all day, stealing snacks from CVS, keeping myself occupied like that. But the tough grade, no, I, you know, we thought, we, we talked some about it, like, 
you know, growing up in, in that type of environment, uh, you know, it's tough, you know, a lot of trauma. You see a lot at a young age that you're not supposed to see. You have to deal with a lot at a young age that you're not supposed to see. And, you know, that affects, you know, you later in life and, you know, with my nonprofit, you know, I work with those are the kids that, you know, I try to, I try to help and work with because I know like, man, it's impossible to focus on school or even have a chance at life when you're dealing with so much when you go home, your environment, you know, it isn't, it's, it's not even, it's not even a space to really to focus or do anything positive. You know what I'm saying? You've seen people dying, you've seen, um, you got to come to, come to school and uh, deal with all this, you know, violence and it's, uh, that's, that's, that's like those, the type of kids that I like, I want to, I really want to reach. I'm telling you, shoot, that's, that's, that's big time of it because I'm a testament of it. And when you, when you come home and you ain't got no power, no water in the house, you eat hot dogs every day, bologna sandwiches, it's like, you're not, you're not worried about school. You know what I'm saying? You, you say it. You seeing people die right, right, like right down the street from from where you lay your head at. It's like school is it's a joke. You know what I'm saying? Both said it's a joke. You got so much going on that people don't even realize, you know what I'm saying? And those those type of situations, it it, it definitely it, it it can it can hinder your growth as a as a child, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So it's big time that you do what you do, bro. Yeah, sure. No, I, I feel, you know, football, you know, luckily that you got into football because you needed something to to really save your life, you know what I'm saying, and, and change the trajectory of your life. So, um, you know, you could have a power opportunity. It's, it's sad that, you know, sports, football was your opportunity. Because you deserve other opportunities and you deserve a better environment. But luckily, uh, you were blessed with <laughs> and unique uh, genetics, really? <laughs> which gave you opportunity. And um, so, yeah, talk about, you know, you getting into football and, and uh, I'm sure it was tough when you first got started, but, you know, you got better and better. I mean, I, mean, I think I was so. I transitioned from BC back to South Carolina. I ended up having to go live with my pops. I mean, I was going to one other high school and I was like, yeah, I want to play football. So he was going to try to get me a different high school. But my dad ended up seeing a coach in the DMV from like one of the, the best high schools. And I ended up going over there. And I, I mean, I wanted to play, but like I didn't really like it at first. Like, mm -hmm. I, like I don't know what it was about it. Like, I just didn't. It was it, it just it wasn't for me. Like I ain't feel cool or nothing playing football. I'm like, you know, they first of all they gave me some Reebok cleats. Like <laughs> I don't, I'm not trying to wear that. You know what I'm saying? They gave me an ugly helmet. And I'm like, you yeah, yeah, bro, definitely. And then everybody was like, yeah, you just out there cause you big. You're not doing nothing. Like, cause I started my first year. You know, and they like, you only start cause you big. They ain't got nobody else to do it. <laughs> So I'm like, man, you know, and I'm gonna show everybody. So I, after the, I heard all the, 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 the naysayers, you know, so I've been dealing with doubt forever when it comes to the sport. And, yeah. and, and it's always me wanting to prove people wrong, but that's what we did in life football, bro. It was, it was, it was not for me. Yeah, it's crazy uh, to see where you're at now. And to see where you started, you know, everybody got a crazy football journey. You know, I definitely didn't like you when I first started either. And uh, you know, once you once you get good at it, you know, you take a like you take a liking to it. But facts. Um, and so, uh, I didn't mean to cut you off, but I think I remember you said in high school, was it your first year you got a scholarship? Yeah, I got a scholarship, but uh, after my freshman year, so before my sophomore year, right? Yeah, they, they, I got a uh, scholarship offer from UCLA. So it, I got I got you know, somewhat good pretty quick, and I was a big kid too. So Me too. you know it, it, it worked it worked out for me. But um, so when you go you do high school, obviously you first start playing, 
then you can tell I'm pretty good pretty quick. You got you get recruited. Um, and then, you know, uh you end up going to junior college, um, out of high school, right? Right. Yeah. So talk about that. Um, I saw uh everybody, everybody knows and sees last year you you were on one of those episodes playing against. Yeah, playing against that team. Yeah, I got a sack too. Yeah, no, I saw I remember it. I felt I was looking back like saying that was JK. Crazy, no. Yeah. yeah. So the the school, South Carolina, first of all, after my my sophomore year, the first year, I had a day off me a scholarship. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I'm excited. But it's so funny to tell us when the coach was like, Yeah, we're gonna offer you. I'm like, what you offering me? Like a scholarship. What is that? Like, yeah. You know what I'm mean? saying? Like, that didn't make no sense. Like, all right. Like, <laughs> okay, cool. You know, so but then I started understanding, I'm like, all right. So I go on to school, you know, I, I never took class, I'm not in a series, so I never had the grades. And uh, uh, that's when Will Muschamp took over the job and uh, he came down to see me, he looked at the transcript and he was like, well, you got two options. You could try to graduate, which that might not happen, and go to this junior college for two years, or what you could do right now is you can drop out right now and go to Mississippi right now, get your GED, and be back in Columbia, South Carolina in one year. And that's exactly what I did. Mm. And uh, when I first got it, I was cool because for one, before that, it, before I left, I was already living with my friend. Like, I ain't really having no way to, to really call on him, you know? So it's like, I mean, I was I was good. Like, I had, I had a bed, like, I had food, mm -hmm. like, you know, so I was, I was scraped with that opportunity. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And uh, when I got there, like, like it was one of them times where, like, I thought I was gonna see some tumbleweed, like <laughs> cows mooing area where that is. So I don't know. It was Ellisville, Mississippi. It's like South Mississippi, bro. Like, oh, bro. hot on mosquitoes. <laughs> like, my allergies kicking up. I'm like, <laughs> bro, like I'm like, this is not for me. <laughs> So the first two days, I ain't going to class. And like, Javon, my coach, Coach Buckley, he like, Javon, if you don't go to class, I'm sending you women. And when he said that, I was like, well, I'm going to go. Like, yeah. So that's really the, the whole, the, the, everything flips me, bro. Like, I, I locked in all the way completely, you know, bought in everything. And I ended up having to take GED courses and college courses in the same year, like, I was having so much stuff to do, bro. And it was the hardest year of my life. But I got through it. Um, I met some some lovely people in the process. You know, I call my family now. Mm -hmm. um, just through all my time down there. And, you know, they come to my games all the time. They support me 110%, you know. So it, it was, it was a, it was like the people that came to Jacksonville. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And it, it was like a, a, a one in a, one of the lifetime type of experience, you know, like, like definitely I've always wanted like the family feel, you know, and I kind of, they gave me that type of comfort that I needed, you know, so and they still do, honestly. Mm -hmm. this, it's so crazy. It, it was so surreal how everything happened for me. And then I got to Carolina, like, so. Yeah, they, they've been amazing support uh, for you. Um, and I, I've seen, you know, throughout your years, them always, you know, sticking by your side. And, I've been, been fortunate enough to meet them at a few games and stuff. So that's that's been pretty cool. So you make it to Carolina, man, you become that dude on the defensive line. Yeah, they start like that, dude. <laughs> first of all, when I first got there, I was like, I was 340. Cause they they were like, my people, they was feeding me so much. Like, and I, I wasn't used to like, just whatever I wanted to eat, it was there. So I was just, Eat, you, you ain't had that growing up. So it was like, I, I, I was, I was spoiled, bro. Yeah. So when I got there, I was super fat, out of shape, stepped on the skin, I got 340. Right. So it was all bad and started all rough. Like got into practice, it was super tough, like super tough. And then they were like double TV on purpose, like mm -hmm. all the time, like every time, all the time, like, bro. And I'm like, why they keep doing this to me? Then you know you watching. They ain't doing it to nobody else. I'm like, like, what's the purpose behind it? It must be a reason. You know, and they double teaming me down there trying to take me to the goalpost. I'm like, yeah, I can't figure it out. But 
it definitely it definitely flipped the switch for me. Like I was like, I had enough. One day I was like, I had enough. So like mentally I just became so much tougher because of that, you know? And mm-hmm. like when I finally got like, started getting good, like the coach, the old line coach would come up to me and was like, Yeah, you, you know we would do that to you on purpose, right? Mm-hmm. We knew we knew the type of player you could be, like, so we had to get it out of you. I'm like, well, I appreciate that, you know. Mm-hmm. But it was it was a tough journey, man. It was a tough journey, especially playing in the SEC because that's where it was going to be, bro. Uh, that's all day. You <laughs> take eight to ten double teams a day, right? Mm-hmm. So, nah, and you 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 down there. I see I see your college highlights, and uh, I remember, um, you know, I was I was in the Niners. We had just just got done, you know, finishing. Our season mm-hmm. coming on a Super Bowl um, appearance, and uh, talking about the draft, and I'm talking to Coach Casari, and uh, I'm like, who, I'm like, who, who, who likes the college right now? <laughs> He's like, man, I ain't, I ain't really watched too much, right? So this, this first call, uh, I, I, I don't know, know how you go, much, right? I don't know how you go. And then, and then three days, like a couple days later, came to me. What is it, dude? From South Carolina? <laughs> down that same bowl. And it was like, yeah, <laughs> I for real. Yeah. So I, look, I looked you up. I was like, ooh. Yeah, he was out there giving boys problems. And uh, so that was the first time I heard about you. And, uh, you know, you get drafted to us. I know that was a life changing, especially, you know, from, you know, everything, you know, financial, financially, where you starting in football. It was life changing. Tell me about that. Did you get drafted? I mean, I mean, I'm not like I'm. I'm not. I know I'm not supposed to be here. Like I, I don't know how. I don't know how I, I I got to this point at all, and I don't know how I keep striving forward. But I, there's no way looking at the statistics, you know, the odds that I overcame to make it this far, you know, and it was surreal, you know, like it didn't really hit me. For one, I don't even know how I got on this team, you know, mm-hmm. like this scene. I, I'm like, you, dude, you just went to the Super Bowl, like how, you know what I'm saying? And off the rip, men- mentally wise, I'm like, dang, am I gonna be good enough? Like, <laughs> I was like, I don't know, like, <laughs> I don't know if I'm gonna be good enough, you know what I'm saying? But it was surreal, man, it felt good. He was calling me crying. I'm like, man, I seen some, I mean, I heard some real, some real gangsters crying. Like, mm-hmm. like for real, for real. Some of the toughest dudes I know, like, I made them cry. So it was like, it was, it was definitely a good experience for me. It's proud of me, for sure. It's proud of you, for sure. Your rookie year had a lot of stories. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it was a lot of stories we could talk about your rookie year. It was, COVID year was a weird year, obviously, for, you know, the world. A um, lot happened. But, you know, just talking about, like, our football space and football season, we were blessed to even have a season, you know. So I'm gonna, I want to preference that. But, you know, it was a weird, it was a weird, tough year, you know, depending to lead, COVID, um, you know, no... No practice, no nothing, no nothing. Straight into fire, just straight into the season. It was real weird, but you know, it was it was a it was definitely a blessing to be able to play football and still, you know, you know, get paid and why everything was going on around the world. But it was definitely a lot of crazy stories. Uh, <laughs> you know, we had to move down to Arizona mm-hmm. last fall into the season, mm-hmm. so we got kicked out. Uh, the Bay Area had to move down to Arizona, and we were trash. <laughs> like we was, no. we was trash. It was a tough season, bro. It was rough, bro. Yeah, I remember. I remember like one of one of our lowest moments. One of our lowest moments that season. We was down in Arizona. We was being fat. I was like, bro, bro, we gotta go eat something, bro. And I hit y'all like, bro, let's go to Raven Cane, bro. <laughs> I, 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 so our first trip, our first trip was Raven Cane, 
And we wanted the Kanyak combo, bro. We just sat there and ate them joints in the car. I was like, bro, that was a long year. <laughs> oh, man, it was a long one. And then, and then like, the next, the next, like, the next week, we were like, bro, we we going again, bro. I'm telling you. I think we might have tried, like, Whataburger. We went to Whataburger. Yeah, it was Whataburger. Whataburger traps, man. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not no Whataburger in and out, dude. It don't matter to me, but I'm gonna take in and out Whataburger. It's turn up. <laughs> I think we, I was like, bro, we down for But it was, uh, it was, uh, I think it was because of the season, bro. It just, yeah, it started, it started weighing on us, bro. Yeah, it was tough. <laughs> remember, uh, <laughs> remember you can't wait to practice? Hey, bro, tell us, tell us, tell us. All right, so. My folks, I got my folks in Arizona, you know, chilling. So I, I'm at the Airbnb with my peoples, and I'm like, all right, I got to get ready to go. So I'm do, 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 the hotel address. All right, yeah, that's it. Put the address in. I'm chilling. You know, I'm in. Actually, I'm in the whip on the way on the meeting. You know, we had the Zoom calls. So yeah. I'm in the whip. So we pull up. I'm like, oh, no, that's not it. Like, like we got the wrong place. And my mom like, really? She tell her like, really? <laughs> so I, I'm like, oh, I'm scrambling 20 minutes away. I'm like, oh, I'm gonna be super late, dog. They're gonna be mad at me. So at this point, I'm drenched in sweat, like, like nervous, super nervous, like, cause I ain't know what to expect. So by the time we get there, I jump out the truck. Y'all already at practice. <laughs> it might be too old, top to bottom, practice gear on. I come with a whole outfit on, walking through the forest, walking through the grass. Everyone looking at me like, look at this dumb ass. <laughs> Yo, that was, that was, that was hilarious. Like, people were really late to meetings and stuff, but a whole practice. A whole practice of messages. I know, I know you was, I know you were stressing. I was spent, bro. I'm like, I got there, like, it just didn't feel real there. And they had my clothing, gave it to me. And I've been like, I've been in the last, so I told the team what really happened. But I, I think people thought I was lying, though. Like, that's really what happened, you know? Like, so everybody kind of walked away, like, man, whatever. Man. Yeah. I, uh, bro, I done, I done messed it up throughout my career, too, bro. I, my rookie year, bro, I missed a team bus to the game. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, we were playing in Denver, bro. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, you got the time slots for the buses. Like, Fair. you know, every 30 minutes, you got three buses every 30 minutes. Fair. So I'm like, all right, a bus, bus, um, I was like, all right, I forgot what time it was, but I was like, I'm gonna take that bus. Mm -hmm. So I'm being dressed, I'm being dressed. We got like 10 minutes to get out of there. Like 10 minutes, all right, go down there. Bro, like the hotel was set up was so weird. Like, I, I got off on the floor. And then like, and then I'm looking and I'm like, bro, where I got off on the floor. I, I'm look, I, I get outside, I'm like, where the bus at? And they like, bro, that bus, come on. Mm. I was like, yeah. Never <laughs> reckon, crunch to the gut. Huh? So I'm like, bro, what I'm gonna do? Mm -hmm. Luckily, luckily my, one of my other teammates missed the bus too. Oh. And uh, when I, uh, and uh, I was like, bro, what do we do? And he, he was like, bro, chill, we're we, we gonna be straight, bro. We're we gonna have to get there as soon as possible. So, bro, we took a we took a cab, bro. We took a no, nah, we took a we took a cab from the hotel to the to the Denver Stadium. Then, like driving through, I'm like, bro, go here, make it right. I'm rolling out the window trying to tell you, like, yo, we on the team. And we get in the stadium, hell late, bro. It was I was so scared, bro. We got fine, but I was just like. I mean, stuff happens, bro. It just that 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 right there, like that feeling when you first know you're gonna be late. It's like the worst feeling. Stomach in your ass, bro. <laughs> you feel like you got a shit. That shit, bro. It's, that. it's it's the worst feeling, bro. But that. the rookie year, the rookie year was crazy. Uh, I feel like you definitely have grown a lot since your rookie year. And what uh, you used to talk crazy to do on the field. Yeah, I'm a lot more like domesticated now. <laughs> So I be chilling these days. Yeah, bro, you be you be chilling. Yeah. You still you still get your ball sometimes, but yeah. I'm, uh, let's talk about coach, let's talk about Coach Chris, man. Uh, um, you know you had you been lucky to play in your whole career. Mm -hmm. Talk about your relationship. You know, for me, 
He's one of the best coaches I've ever had. It really changed my career. Same. Um, Coach Chris, I love that guy. Uh, one of the true people I knew, like, when I was down and out, like, standing on the table, vouching for me, you know? And I just don't, I don't want to let him die. Like, you know, he's just that type of guy. Like, you just, you know how it is, bro. You, you know, you go out there, you get reached. Like, you like, damn. Like, you feel like I should have let him die. <laughs> so it looks like you just never want to let him down, bro. He's a heck of a guy. Like, way better of a human being than he is a coach. And uh, just coaching-wise, he, he prepares us, like, top level, bro. Like, I've been blessed. You know what I mean? My four years in the league, being with him, it's like, I've been blessed. Bro. Yeah, but he's just a great person, man. Yeah, no, and I have him out back from the jump, you know, so. Yeah, one of us, I, you know, Coach Chris, he, he's the best coach definitely I play for. Mm -hmm. And um, like I just said, one of the best people you could be around. And, you know, I've had some different coaches throughout the years, obviously. And the, the thing that I, uh, you know, I'm so grateful for with, with Chris is like, uh, you know, his belief in you and giving that all and instilling that confidence or, you know, into you. And, um, you know, when, I, when he first came, he called me. I was, it was off season, you know what I'm saying? And it was, you know, before I had my best season. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, it was, a, it, it was a different narrative around me as a player. Mm -hmm. And he called me. He was like, this to you is going to change your life. It's a year that's going to change your career. And he meant that. Like, and, he, and he really meant that. He's I believe in you. Um, the way I'm going to use you and put you in a position to be successful, it's going to be the best year yet. Believe that. Come in ready to work. And he ain't, he, he ain't never let me down. He ain't never, um, no. he ain't never lied to me. Everything that he said has been true since day one. For sure. Man, yeah, ultimately respect coming in on my field. Um, I haven't got to it. Got to talk to no one about about Chris Paul. Let him do for sure. Man, what? he crazy though. <laughs> Man, he got his days. He got his days for sure. Yeah, but that's just no. It, when them days come, and some days me and him like we won't even talk. Walk right past each other. Like, but he just wanted. He wanted to see it come to fruition so bad for you. Like, sometimes I ask myself, like, damn, you know what is for me? More I want is for myself. Yeah. Like, it's just he's that's just the way that type of dude. Like, yeah, you, you can tell. You can tell he wanted so bad. Like for you, he wants you to be successful, and he poured everything into it. Gotcha. I I appreciate this a lot. Me too. Um, obviously, you know me and you have talked about it before. You know, facing adversity. You know, you have faced a lot of adversity in life in general, but. You know, being in the NFL, you face your share of adversity as well, and you mm -hmm. uh, battle through injury. And, um, you know, talk about that. You know, I've been able to, uh, I've been in a similar situation well, early in my career. I was an IR two years in a row. And, uh, you know, it's a terrible, it's a terrible feeling you feel, you know, one year of pain. Um, which I don't think a lot of people realize, like how depressing being in pain can be, you know, for an extended period of time. And then two, you know, you're isolated, you don't feel part of the team. Um, got pressure and people talking about you. And so, man, talk about that uh, situation and, you know, overcoming or coming that. Um, you know, I, I've been in that situation too. Well, I think it was like week 12 in my rookie year, I ended up trying to make a play and I uh, couldn't brace myself to fall and I just banged my knee into the, the turf mm -hmm. against the Cowboys. And yeah. it just, it wasn't right, you know, and it took so much time for it to heal. So I missed so many, so much time, so many reps, so many games, you know, mm -hmm. to be able to really be where I needed to be. And I just, it slowed my development, you know? Mm -hmm. It was nothing I could do about it because I, I worked super hard to try to put myself in the right position every year in, year out, day in, day out, you know. And like you said, I was super isolated, super depressed. Um, 
like like super depressed. Like I, I've never been so depressed in my life from from that uh that injury that I sustained, and especially because I, I was watching you guys on TV, you know, just go just go bananas. And I wanted to be a part of it so bad. Mm-hmm. But I, I just couldn't, you know. See, it was killing me. But I knew one day that the dial was gonna turn the corner. You know, I kept that faith and back to Coach K, like he he was the one that really kept me going. Like just kept like, like just keep sat, keep chopping. It's gonna it's gonna happen for you. Keep grinding. And so he he really helped me through that process mentally. And you did as well. I still remember after my my surgery, you sent me some some chicken and waffles, <laughs> some some chicken and waffles in the hospital in LA, bro. I still remember that. Yeah, and I was had to get you ready. Right. Laid up in, he was laid up in in LA. I was like, man, let me send it to Roscoe. That was real. That that meant a lot to me because I I it was so crazy because y'all was going through so much in the season for you to take the time to do that for me. That meant everything to me, bro. Mm-hmm. And you sent me a lot too. Like, <laughs> I got it. You got sent me a lot, like three waffles, <laughs> ten chicken wings. I smashed <laughs> all of them. <laughs> yeah, crazy, you just had right, you that for your soul, definitely, bro. And yeah, but everything kind of it worked out, you know, worked itself out, and now I'm finally reaping the benefits of the grind. You know, grinding the grind. We talk about that all the time. You know, yeah, so now nah, you. I was I was so proud of you, you know, because I've been there, just have seen, you know, the the journey, the a lot of the ups and downs, and you know, you're being there, seeing your, you know, experiencing it with you. Like, damn, how does he keep, you know, how does he keep going? And I'm like, I'm trying to be there, be you know, supportive and and help as well too. But it's just like, bro, it's it's only like so much at times that someone can take and. I don't think a lot of people realize that, you know, I played through, uh, I played through, you know, injuries and stuff like that. But like when you're, you're in me and, you know, you're, you're not able to be yourself and like you're playing in pain and that's, that shit is tough. But, you know, I've, I've been able to see you on the other side now and I, I want to tell you how proud I am of you. Um, you know, at this point, you were playing amazing football. And I knew it was, it was just a matter of time. I knew, I was telling, I've been telling everybody, like, man, wait till he gets, wait till he's able to be healthy and stack some games together. And, and uh, <laughs> y'all know and see exactly what, uh, you know, what JK is capable of. And that's what we're seeing this year, man. we are balling uh, week in and week out, getting better. And uh, I wanted to tell you that I'm proud of you. And uh, we got some more to do, though. But a whole lot. We got some more to do, but I wanted to tell you that I'm proud of you. And um, let's talk about, you know, let's talk about, you know, your mindset this year. Um, how you feeling? How you want to finish off this year? And, you know, where you're at right now? Well, the mindset, it, it's always been the mindset. You know, since I was a young folk, like, just go out there and just try to be as physical as you can because that's going to take care of everything else. And so, I I mean, you know, we all care about the numbers game, you know, but I feel like me, you got that in common. We judge it off of how physical we can play and how much we can really go out there and play dominantly. Both are well. You know, yeah, and, and we kind of have that, that similarity, you know, mm-hmm. so that's all that really matters to me. You know, if you're opposing your will, then you're going to be making plays, you know? Mm-hmm. So that's all it's about for me. I don't really care about the numbers right now. You know, I'd be out like some sacks. <laughs> yeah. i like some TLA. Yeah. You've been, you been getting them this past couple yeah. weeks. I like it, but it wasn't. Yeah. I'm just trying to do my job for one, the best that I can. You know, mm-hmm. yeah. it's, going, it's going to shake out however it's supposed to, you know, mm-hmm. God willing. We, we'll see how that ends up, you know? Yeah. And it's, it's ending up nice. You can make it plays. Um, big, big uh, reason why I'm able to win games is because of you in your play all season. And um, I feel like you're getting better and better every week. Really just getting started, hitting your stride at a perfect time. Uh, Appreciate that. When, when we needed the most down the stretch, and that's when we got to be at our best. Mm-hmm. Most definitely. And uh, I can't wait to 
continue this journey the rest of the season. Um, keep all keep all out there and playing, you know, together. And uh it's gonna be gonna be a lot of fun. We got a lot of big time yeah, football games sure. coming up. We just getting warmed up. Mm-hmm. Sure. Talk about our relationship. Uh you know, I feel like we have an amazing relationship. I think it's I think it's progressed. It changed throughout the years too, you know. Um, for sure. <laughs> we got some stories, dog. I think yeah. that we progressed and changed uh, early on. You know, I was just, you know, trying to do everything I can to help uh help you and you know, teach you and you know, try to share everything I I I know and you know, knowledge of football and Definitely. at different times. You know, and then also letting you learn yourself too, you know. Mm-hmm. And uh, you know, now I feel like, man, you've been such a huge support for me in my career, you know, in my ear, um, you know, constantly motivating me. And uh it's been it's been great, you know, to to continue to develop and grow our relationship. Well, for one, let me just say this into the camera. This is my favorite football player. <laughs> I I said this to him for years now. You know, the way he impacts the game, the stuff that he does that he doesn't get credit for, it is just I don't see many guys that are doing that at the versatility, be able to play inside and outside. And I'm not just talking about third down, I'm talking about first and second down as well. You know, it, 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 it's bar none. So hats off of him, this is my favorite play in the NFL. <laughs> Hands down. Um, but yeah, man, this this big bro right here, he always just taking me under his wing and showing you showing you the ropes from day one. And it's always been like that, you know, then now that I'm maturing and you know, he sees the growth, you know, he 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 took the call off me a little bit, you know. <laughs> so and he always let me know right from wrong and you know, all that type of good stuff, man. The big brother that I've always wanted. You know, and I always appreciate you for that, man. It's, mm-hmm. it's been it's been cool for me, bro. I, I couldn't have been more blessed that having somebody like you around. You know, so no, nah, it's been a blessing for me too, man. And, you know, God, that's how God works. He put people in your life that you need. I definitely needed you in my life, and then I feel like you know I, I think so highly of you. Um, it's been a blessing to to have you as a teammate and have you as a brother. Uh, you got a lot of fans, man. You know, and um, Ooh. man, you got a lot of fans, man. And if people want to know, you know, what I know, what JK be into. If you know, away from football, you know, they they know you as a football player, but you know, tell some of the people what you like to do. You know, off the field, what you like to get into. Ah, uh, man. Well, I mean, I can't do it in much, but I like to fish. I'm a hunter. Uh, I'm, I'm a real outdoors person. Um, I love the fashion. Uh, I have dogs. You know, I, I love all animals, but I have six dogs. Bull, oh, not a bull master, but bull bull. Uh, I have an XL bully. You have four Frenchies. Um, I'm into the Frenchie game. I'm, I'm new to it, but um, I love it. I love just that. I just love the love that animals have for you, like, it's just bar none, you know, and they know great people when they see them, you know, and it, it's just, I just have that heart for, for all things, all yeah. creatures, you know, mm-hmm. and just dogs, that's my thing, you know, that's my main thing, dogs. Love dogs? Yeah. Me talk about it, you might, might want to do some, like, farming and stuff in the future, and, and oh, yeah, get into some big, some bigger animals and oh yeah, yeah, definitely the cows, you know, the horses. Not, I just stay animals. That's my thing. I like definitely, I definitely want to get into the cows though. So, um, when the time is right, you know, gotta keep grinding right now. Don't worry about that later. You know? Yeah, nah, that's what's up. I know you. I know you get in fashion for sure. We we stepping on game day. Trying to know. Uh, what's what's what's. One of your favorite fits from from this season? Um, I really don't have one. I mean, I just I love them all the same way, honestly, bro. Mm-hmm. Like, for me, I love anytime I wear a suit. Um, I feel like I feel like I ain't gonna lie, shout out to Mooney, but I feel like I got the best suit game on the team. 
You know, I I, I represent the soups very well. And but yeah, man, I take a, I take great pride in it because my dad wore a lot of suits. Mm-hmm. And the 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 streetwear, um, growing up in DC, you would see dudes come stand outside about to carry out of the corner store and a whole outfit on, you know, like like dollar and dollar pair of shoes just to stand in there and eat a uh either carton or pork fried rice, you know what? Just to stand around bubble coats, you know, the jeans, the hats, you know, the the chains, everything. So I would walk outside and see that on a daily. So that that's kind of where it came from. Now the the DC culture definitely, definitely I think that makes you, you know, unique to, you know, living down south and in DC. It's like a, you know, and being your your island culture. You know, yeah. being Trinidad, that too. It just made us a, <laughs> it makes life a special, unique person, bro. And like, uh, you know, it's, I think it's intriguing for, for people to, you know, get to learn more about you. Mm-hmm. I mean, you can see that all the different, all the different facets uh, of you, you know what I'm saying? The way, it, even with your style too, like, it's like, yeah, like, where, where this dude from? Like, it's, yeah, it's, it's all on the place. It's all over the place. Like, it ain't, it ain't just one alley, you know, it's, so, yeah, for sure. No, that's what's up. Uh, what music you been listening to? Who you, who, who you been vibing with? Um, I listen to a lot of Kodak Black. Uh, I listen to G Herbo. Uh, that's like my top two. Um, I do this, I mean, I, I don't listen to, it ain't nothing I don't listen to under the sun. You know, I like the, the underground artists too. Uh, let me see. Uh, I listen to, uh, I listen, so I went to school with a lot of guys from Florida. So I listen to a lot of underground Florida guys like uh, FCG, uh, LOE Shimmy. Uh, but then I got underground guys in DC, just it, like a lot of underground music, like people that's not going, that's not popular right now, but they going to blow eventually. You know, that's the type of music I like. I feel like when guys get so mainstream, they start to change their style and they swag and I don't like listening to it. <laughs> but as far as mainstream, I listen to Kodak, G Herbo, a little bit of Lil Baby, Dre, uh, you know, any of the guys. I mean, you, you don't put me on a couple couple artists. You're like, bro, you heard it? I'm like, bro, I don't know. Who that is? Who you put me on? I think you put me on Yeet. You're like, all the other. All the, uh, that, all the young and all the young. I don't know what he be saying, be saying yeah, sometimes, but <laughs> it, his beat's crazy. And all the youngest listen to Yeet, man. Nah, that's just up. Uh, so I got a, I got a session of the show called Self Scout, so we're going to break down to the film and Let's do it. get into it. So this, this is a bliss right here. You got open bird, three hop. So obviously the blitz is, I know the blitz is coming away from me. Mm-hmm. So I got to feed the blitz, honestly. Uh, and my job right here is to just pray for a reach block. We sum up what you got, what I got. And yeah, I just end up I just end up, I don't know, just wrecking it, bro. Just getting off the ball, playing violent, playing physical, what we talk about, uh, and just trying to set that edge to make the ball cut back into the blitz. But I end up making the play too. And um, it was cool. It was cool for me, man. That was, that was awesome, you know? And most of the times in situations like this, uh, sometimes I don't even realize that that was a, that big of a play because sometimes I just be so locked in on mm-hmm. trying to make sure I do my job, you know, it was awesome. Now I was a huge play in that because we, we knocked them back and then we got the field and they were driving the ball. Exactly. Um, and you know, that play right there is getting that, getting that TFL stepping back, which, um, you know, put them behind the chain and we were able to get off the field and when the game was, you know, still, it was still, you know, it was early in the game. And they were driving, so that was that was a clutch play. And it's just a stud, regular car. And honestly, I'm playing these dudes a lot. Uh, you know, they love to try to run bounce flex, and that's kind of their thing. I mean, right here, I just knew, I kind of knew what it was going because I was listening to the sound. He was true to what he was saying, and I knew they was coming to me. So I just wanted to 
get off the ball as quick as I could, um, kind of swim. That's not ideal sometimes, but when you're just going, that's kind of what, what happens. And you end up, I end up swimming the guard and end up going, not going straight up the field. And I end up kind of ricocheting off of the center, you know, for him trying to take me over. I didn't allow him to take me over. And then once I got that, I, I got flat. You know, flat set the edge, like <laughs> he set the edge crazy right there. So I was able to make it with play. No, that was that was a shout out to Flan. That was a huge play, you know. And in that in that two opposition in the run game, like you know, with those combo blocks, that's exactly what you want to do. You mm -hmm. know, it wasn't. It's, it's critical. Yeah, to get off is important. Get off, get vertical, disrupt, but also be able to make the play. You know, redirect and make the play get get flattened out on the line. And those type of players are those type of players are huge. So right there. I, I knew the slide was coming my way. I knew they were sliding over to me and Nick. So right there, my job is to not stay on the guard, do it, work the center, work the inside edge of the center. Um, hey, push the pocket, you know, push the pocket. I like to push the pocket. You know, some guys like to finesse in there, but me, I like to push the pocket, you know, not give the court no way to step up. So yeah. you got to slide, right? Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they slid my way. Stayed away, so you got the guard and the center blocking you direct. And, you know, I've been, you know, before Chris, you know, he talks about the value, you know, the importance of of making that, even though you're getting double teamed, making it still a rush. Facts. You know, in the past, like other coaches are like, oh, like you get a double when you get the slide, it is where it is, just kind of like down off, but Facts. it's never a down off for us, you know what I'm saying? Like, we've got to, like keep going, keep pushing the pocket. And you just, you never, you just never, never know. know. You never, never know in that happen. situation. And it, it, it shook for me. Yeah. You know, did on this way. And um, Nick had a heck of a rush. Um, Chase is also doing his thing over there. Everybody's just doing their job, you know, and I just happened to reap the benefit, you know, as well as Nick, even though I feel like I had the whole. <laughs> I said to have to sack with them, but no, it was you awesome. Know, snapped, you definitely snatched them. It was, it was, it was awesome, man. It was <laughs> awesome. And again, in the heat of the moment of battle, I, mm, I just got up and I, I'm so locked in. Like, I just don't realize the significance of the play, you know? Yeah. Once I got to the sideline, I kind of did, as you know, you know. Yeah, I was, you went crazy in the sideline, you let them boys. Let everybody know that he was going crazy. Facts. You let the side, you let the let the crowd know. Facts. <laughs> Just black. I'll, I'll be doing that sometimes, but I'll come back around and all. Yeah. It was it was just awesome, man. Yeah, well, awesome. man. I was uh, this game, this game to see you ball was cool. You know, uh, you know when I'm out there playing, it's it's dope too. You know, a lot of taking taking the field with you, mm -hmm. but. Uh, you know, being out this game and being able to being able to watch and just be there on the sideline and see you doing your thing and going out there and balling and making plays. It was it was it was dope to see and you know, come back to the sideline, having that success, feeling good. No, that was a good feeling. It was feeling great. <laughs> and it, and it is, ain't too many better feelings in the world than it. playing the big time NFL games, making plays. No in front of of 70,000. No, <laughs> Make you feel like, man, ain't, ain't too many people in the world doing this. Facts. Yeah, so that was dope to see you. You uh, you definitely went crazy. Um, we wrap we wrap up, man. This, this is an episode I was looking forward to. I appreciate you getting on the pod, man. It's been, been a long time coming. Appreciate you, man. Um, you know, when I started the pod, I always wanted to, you know, give give us a voice, you know what I'm saying? Give us a platform to um, talk about stuff that's important to us. And, you know, I feel like the media always shapes and forms the narrative for us. But yeah, the media. Yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> Name, some, some, some names we won't mention, won't give no breath to. But, <laughs> yeah, I think you're doing a heck of a job, man. You're doing a heck of a job, bro. You're such a, such a spokesperson, man. No, I appreciate you, man. And it's awesome, bro. You you make me be like that. 
can I do that? Like, you know, like, yeah, 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 bro. Nah, I can't. Yeah, bro. This, this ain't, this, it, 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 don't, it don't take nothing, but, it don't take nothing, but just, just doing it. You know, I didn't, I didn't know, you know, I didn't really know about like this kind of space and, um, you know, you just like anything, you get better with practice and, sure. you know, I just took, took a, took a step, you know, got uncomfortable and, um, you know, it's been, it's been great. I feel like the show is growing and people are enjoying it. You know, having, uh, having special people on the show like you and being able to, like, like I said, control our narratives, talk about stuff that we find important, talk about, um, bring people closer to the game and get to know more about us and come straight from the horse's mouth, not, not a, a regurgitated story or, um, you know, some narrative that a reporter, you know, wants to create. Um, you know, I think they have a, a great responsibility in in uh in the media and um, there are definitely a lot of great members of the media, but I feel like this type of platform is important for us to to uh talk and speak our mind. Gotcha, bro. Yeah, appreciate bro. you for having me, bro. Appreciate you. Appreciate you getting on. This is uh, a wrap for another episode of Third Along presented by Verizon. Don't forget to like comment, subscribe, let us know, you know, what, uh, what you guys want to hear. Um, and, you know, keep tuning in, keep supporting. You guys have been an amazing support for us as the show continues to grow. And, uh, you know, I'll see you on another episode of Summer. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Federal Mall.